Okay, so we've got three exposures here, and we're going to blend them in Photoshop. So we got a dark exposure, we got a bright exposure, or I'm sorry, we have a middle exposure, and then we have the bright exposure. And the thing that's really killing me right off the bat is how bad the white balance is. I mean, it's, it's really leaning towards green and yellow, and I don't like it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the little eyedropper here, and we are going to sample an area that's pretty white. So I think that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more warmth. Yeah. So about 4850 with 21 tint. So if you look at the before and after, just looks a lot more clean. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to get rid of the sharpening for now because I'm going to add it in Photoshop. And then I'm going to remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. So now all of them should have the same settings. Perfect. So let's go ahead and edit in. And instead of opening them as layers, we want to open them as smart objects. That way we can still have access to the raw data and we can make adjustments with our luminosity masks. Wow, that opened quick. So my workflow with Raya Pro is interesting. Whoops. Is interesting because I don't use things like Instamask, Quick Blend, or anything like that. I just use precision masks. Um, I think that they're the quickest way to do it. And I just really like this interface. So I'm going to go to the Raya Pro 4 panel and I'm going to click Stack. It's going to stack all of our documents into one single document. Okay, so now we can go ahead and turn this off, this dark exposure, we'll turn it off, and we'll just want to blend our middle exposure with the bright exposure. So we're going to go ahead and click Auto Dark, and that's going to generate a couple masks for us. So we can cycle through the mask with like these one, two, three, four, five, six buttons. So if we went with one, that's a pretty general mask. Six is really restrictive. Um, I think we'll go somewhere in like in the middle with like a three. And then maybe click edit. And I don't think we need to do too much editing with this. Yeah, let's go ahead and click OK. And we'll hit select to select that mask. And as you can see, it's blended it pretty well, but it's a little bit flat. It's just, it's just, it lacks any depth. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this thumbnail and that will launch the camera raw settings for our uh, raw file. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the exposure up and we're going to bring the highlights down and maybe even the shadows. So now we're matching it to some degree with the brighter exposure and as you can see boom much better blend so cool beans we're gonna do the same thing with our dark exposure and we're gonna go with auto dark and you're going to click and like this is just terrible this is why we match exposures in Photoshop because Typical uh, luminosity blending or just standard luminosity blending will give you this if you're trying to blend exposures that are too different from each other. So, I mean, we can restrict it, but it looks really flat. All the contrast is just lost. So we'll go with three and do an edit. I'm going to bring up the whites and maybe bring down the blacks. Click OK. Now that looks perfect. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it looks terrible. So we'll click select, double click on that thumbnail to bring up the camera raw settings. And we will bring up the exposure, bring down the highlights quite a bit, bring up the shadows, bring down the exposure, maybe a little bit more. Click OK. Now then, that is looking pretty snazzy. I like it. I don't like it everywhere though. So what we're going to do is we're going to group it. 
with Control G, add a layer mask, go to the brush tool, which is B on the keyboard, Control Alt right click will allow you to resize your brush, and we're just going to paint away the areas that we don't want. So I think, yeah, that looks good. Maybe a little bit right there. Perfect. So that looks pretty snazzy so far. And if we look really closely, our blend is perfect. No edging, no halos, no nothing, no smoky edges, nothing like that. It's perfect. So let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of color correction. Now, I think the color is looking pretty good so far, but I think we'll go ahead and click on correct one. And as you can see, it's just a little bit cooler now, maybe a little bit too cool. We'll bring that down to about 50 on the opacity. Perfect. And now what we're going to do is we're going to desaturate the yellows. Cool, cool, cool. I just don't want it everywhere, so we'll invert the mask. Use our brush tool. Use our brush tool. Why, are you, why aren't you going to the brush tool? There we go. Brush tool. And we'll paint black on the areas that we want to affect. Or well, the areas that we don't want to affect, I should say. Which I feel like I'm doing it wrong. Am I doing it wrong? No, no, no. I'm, uh, oh, wait. Yes, I am. I'm doing it wrong. Completely doing it wrong. So I want to get rid of all this and just protect this area. Because this should be pretty yellow. And I think that looks pretty snazzy so far. a little bit less over here cool 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 and I think I think we could do something with the colors because I want to make this darker so we'll go ahead and click color adjust and we'll go ahead and just click on the little icon here and we're gonna use this little hand tool and we're gonna bring this down just make it a little bit darker Maybe this as well, and then, hmm, I quite like that. I don't like it everywhere though, I don't like it in the, in the middle. So we'll go ahead and just get rid of it right there. Cool beans, I dig it. So now, what we want to do is we want to go to our dodge and burn section and I usually dodge and burn the midtones and then with the levels slider here I'll click auto just to bring up the white point and I will dodge this to some degree and I think it's a little bit too much let's start off with 5% yeah that's better Nice. That looks pretty good. It kind of evens it out. Maybe it's a little bit too strong. Bring down the opacity. Get out of here. Yeah. And maybe we'll dodge some areas as well. It's a little bit too strong. Oh, I'm sorry, not dodge. What is it? Burn. There we go. There we go. Words are hard. All right, now we'll add an S curve just to get a little bit of more contrast, but I think this is a little bit too much, so I'll bring down the opacity. And then I will just get rid of it on some of the black areas because I don't want it to be too strong in the darks. I just really want it to affect the midtones and the highlights. And I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and go to the finishing option or the finishing section 
and we will sharpen no edge and this will basically sharpen our image quite a bit but it will protect the edges so we don't get anything like halos so if you look let me zoom in quite a big difference and I think I think I think I think we'll go ahead and just so we can save it as a JPEG or we can convert it to um, sRGB first um, I usually just save it as a JPEG and then I'll sharpen and resize for the web so 2048 and then once it'll do that do you want to convert the profile to sRGB yes and then we have a couple options here we have sharpened sharpen more and then extreme sharpening look at that I kind of like the extreme sharpened uh, just just uh, I kind of like it actually um, so that's pretty much my Raya Pro workflow it's pretty simple um, nothing too fancy nothing out of the ordinary but um, if you guys have any comments questions concerns advice uh, just leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to them or try to get back to you there we go that's pretty much it if you guys want um, kind of like a Lumenzio workflow uh, I will try to make that as well but I've really been digging Raya Pro it's super super awesome and I just realized there's birds on this this uh, this chair alright guys take care